St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the Auxiliary Bishop of the Central Region of Toronto Archdiocese, the Most Reverend William McGratton. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, for the souls of his wife and his two sons and for his special intention. The second is Dorothy Melanowski from Summerland, British Columbia, in memory of her husband Vic, for their families, and in thanksgiving for blessings received and the televised Mass. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In distress, Jeremiah raised his voice to the Lord. O oh Lord, you have enticed me and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greedily, greatly ashamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evil doers. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Yes, A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews took up stones to stone him. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. From which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, is, is not for the good works that we are stoning you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? But if I am doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest Jesus again, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing earlier, and he remained there. Many came to Jesus, and they were saying, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed in him there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
We see in this encounter with the Jewish authorities, Jesus once again claiming that he has come from the Father and that they have seen the works of the Father in their very midst, works of forgiveness, of healing, of bringing to life. And the devastating response is the fact that they are willing to stone the very human face of God. It is the utter rejection of God in their midst. And despite the reference to scripture that Jesus provides for them, and that the scripture has not been annulled, they still do not accept the testimony of the word. We see this rejection as part of the gospel narrative of Jesus' ministry. It is also part of the narrative of the Christian life, that as we come to profess and to witness to Christ in our lives, sometimes the response is what we see Jesus receiving, rejection. The response, though, of Jesus is very instructive for us as well. It's not a response of pacifism, but it is an abandonment to the Father. We're told in John's Gospel that he returns back to Jordan, to the place where John was baptizing. It is a, a sign, once again, that Jesus returns to the very source of his ministry. And we know in John's Gospel how when John baptized Jesus and the water was flowing over him, Scripture reveals that the Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved. Follow him. And so we see Jesus once again in the face of rejection, abandoning himself to God's will, trusting that God himself will sustain him. The journey of Lent, even though it is filled with the practices of prayer, of fasting and almsgiving, Really, at the heart of that spiritual journey is what Jesus is teaching us in the gospel, that we are to constantly, each day, abandon ourselves to the Father, to trust, even in the face of rejection, of discouragement, whatever we might be facing, to respond as Jesus did, to trust and to allow the Father to bring the gift of his presence to us. The prophet Jeremiah also witnesses to this in the first reading. In the face of opposition, of discouragement, of his voice not being heard in the message of God's love, he himself retreats and trusts once again that God will sustain him. If God has sustained us in this journey of Lent, it is so that we can enter into the glory of Holy Week where we learn from the very scripture and the very witness of Christ how he continues to abandon himself to the Father. The temptation in the garden, the acceptance of God's will on the cross, and ultimately, the gift of new life that we receive through his abandonment to the Father. If Lent has been a time in which we have grown in that trust of God and we have abandoned each and every day to the Father. We have, in the words of many of the spiritual writers, accompanied Jesus in this sacred time of Lent. May our Holy Week also be blessed through our abandonment and our trusting in God's love. With trust in his love and providence, we bring our prayers and our needs to God, our Almighty Father. For the teachers of the church, that their example and teaching may continue to help show us that the Lord always provides for our needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are no longer practicing their Catholic faith, that God graces, graces may help bring them back home to the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who feel abandoned in their need, that by our prayers and the assistance of caring Catholics, 
they may come to feel less alone, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are present, we ask the experience of God's goodness that they who share in the good news with others may be blessed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, that they may have the gift of eternal joy in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, all that is good comes from you. We ask that you hear our prayers and answer our needs. We make our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of your name. The praise and glory of his name. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars, and that there be saved by your constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through your saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer by St. Augustine. God of our life, there are days when the burdens we carry chafe our shoulders and weigh us down. When the road seems weary and endless, the skies gray and threatening, when our lives have no music in them, our hearts are lonely and our souls have lost their courage. Flood the path with light. Turn our eyes to where the skies are full of promise. Tune our hearts to brave music. Give us the sense of comradeship with heroes and saints of every age. And so quicken our spirits that we may be able to encourage the souls of all who journey with us on this road to life. To your honor and glory. Amen. Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive from us all that would do us harm through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to two donors, the first an anonymous donor from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. The second is Dorothy Malinowski from Summerland, British Columbia. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. This coming week on Monday and Tuesday evening, the National Catholic Mission for this year, three troubling questions. It'll be broadcast on Vision TV at 6 p.m. and repeated at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Please check the local listing for the time in your area. Yeah.